Welcome to MCOM Solutions. Today is an update on the FCC filing by NextNav. So I got quite a few questions about that video and I wanted to provide a little bit of clarification and please understand that this is not intended to be fear mongering. It is intended to encourage you to have your voice heard by the FCC. So when they make, when they sit down and they start reading through these comments, they understand what people's concerns are about what NextNav wants them to do with the 900, the lower portion of the 900 megahertz band. So we're going to take a look at the public notice that was filed by the FCC or released by the FCC on the 6th of August, 2024. And then we'll look at some of the comments and I'm going to just go in real quick to show people how to file comments because I had a couple questions about that on the original video. So we'll take a look at that. There's an easy option there for uh, individuals that are looking for the easiest way just to provide a brief comment. So take, let's take a look. Okay, so if you jump over to the FCC's website, I will provide links to what I'm looking at here. Here is the public notice that FCC uh, released on the, what it was at the 6th of August, 2024, talking about the, the what NextNav has petitioned for rulemaking requests, basically changing the rules. It details everything. I'm not gonna go line by line here, um, but if you look kind of the summary here at the end, uh, is basically asking the commission to uh, reconfigure the low lower 900 megahertz bands, creating a five megahertz uplink and to the 902 to 907 so is below uh, currently people using mestastic think it's 915 megahertz but your radios are actually set to 906 megahertz uh, based off of the mestastic project the configuration from the firmware so that could impact that right and then paired with a 10 megahertz downlink from 918 to 928 megahertz um, <clears throat> and there's more in there like i said i'm not going to go into super detail you can read this document yourself link below as stated um, i'm going to go into how to do um, right here this is the link for the fcc the uh, filing if you submit standard is what I originally showed in the original video, kind of self-explanatory. Um, yes, you have to provide quite a bit of information and some people had the issue with, they didn't want to have to create a document, upload the document. Um, so you can go back if you just want to make a quick comment and submit an express filing and it basically just allows you to write your brief comment right here um, there's probably a character limit that's why they call it express and then you still have to provide pretty much the same information and i understand some people might not want to provide this personal information your name and you, what you write will be available uh, for public uh, viewing so if that is concerning to you just either <laughs> make sure you understand what you're putting there uh, your address and stuff is not available, but your your name and then the comments that you make are available for viewing. We'll look at one of the entities that filed a complaint or concern. And this is uh, a memorandum format that was filed on the 30th of August, 2024 from uh, the LA County Metro Transportation Authority. Well, it's, I'll provide links, of course, but if you just go down kind of the, the little con conclusion here or their concerns, right, is their concerns are related to um, the increased channel crowding and interference. So they have the express lanes there that use an RFID system for like your fast passes and stuff like that. Anybody that's gone, you know, uses toll roads or toll bridges. A lot of times they have the express lanes or whatever that you can go through and you have to have uh, you know some sort of device on your vehicle usually that you've paid for 
and it makes it so you don't have to stop and pay, well, that's utilizing these frequencies and they're concerned about those type of interference. And then they also talk here about there's no real world testing of what uh, NextNav plans to do. So the um, kind of unknown results of what kind of interference might be received uh, or problems it may cause other users in these frequencies. So that is just a good example of that. You can go through and look at all kinds of comments. There's, like I said, there's over right now, it says filing 326. Um, some of those are like the original filing from uh, NextNav and so on and so forth. But you can look that by like, uh, if you just go into search filings and yes, um, here is, you've noticed the comment um, and then comment express. That means, you know, they use the express method, comment, 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 you know, so on and so forth. Those are the standard, see how there's, there's an attached PDF file. That is how you do that. If you have any other questions, please let me know. Uh, my whole point of this is not to fear monger. It's just if if you don't express your concerns to the FCC, how do they know, you know, how do they know how to respond to this petition from uh, NextNav? If they get no opposition, no concerns, no comments from users uh, that use either the ISM bands or the amateur radio side of that or both, because a lot of people do, a lot of majestic users also use or amateur radio operators. So if you don't express any concerns, then they don't know the, you know, your voice is unheard. So please make your voice heard. If you're one of those that could be impacted by this, you have only a couple of days. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow along, follow us at our other social media links, which are linked below website. Stay tuned for more great videos.